Would you welcome Robert Wu, people? Come on. The one and only Robert Wu, baby. Thank you guys, thank you so much. How's everyone doing? Enjoying this fine Sunday? Yeah. All right. So listen, do any of you guys watch YouTube? Yeah, you've heard of YouTube? Yeah. So like, you ever watch these things and you look and like, there's always like these ones that have like thousands of views, right? And you're like, you know, I wonder what it'd be like to pick the brain of one of these YouTubers, you know? That's what they call them, YouTubers. I, I found that out because uh, I did not know I'm, I'm old. So, so, so YouTubers, right? So luckily we have one in the house today. We have Hannah Redlick in the house today. Now Hannah has been getting the attention of thousands of people on YouTube, constantly watching her videos. She's a dancer and a filmmaker. And, and, and one of the people that I noticed that, that uh, she got their attention was Lin-Manuel Miranda. Do, do you know who that is? No big deal. No, no big deal. <laughs> yeah, no, the uh, creator of Hamilton, and uh, as I know through my daughters, Moana, which is bigger than Hamilton, all right? So, <laughs> so hey, uh, everybody, you know, let, let's give it up. Uh, a nice round of applause for Miss Hannah Redlick. Come on up. I got you the red chair for you, Redlick. All right. Come on down. All right. You ready to be grilled? Here we go. First question. So, who is Hannah? Oh my God, no. that's so hard. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, and, and more importantly, like, what are you passionate about? What's, what's your passions? Well, I'm Hannah Redlick. I'm 22 years old. I'm from North Carolina, um, and I love just about any artistic medium I can get my hands on. So I'm a visual artist. I'm a writer. Um, an Irish step dancer, leather worker, um, but what I'm really passionate about and what my primary focus is is filmmaking. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, how'd you get into that? Like, were you just born with a camera in your hand? <laughs> Actually, growing up, I wanted to be a doctor, so my parents were thrilled when I was like, "Actually, I want to go into filmmaking." But um, no, <laughs> that's I was, tough. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be completely honest. I'm a huge geek. I love Lord of the Rings. Oh, ah, yeah. yes. Yeah. Tolkien. Give it up for Tolkien. <laughs> so I saw Lord of the Rings when I was 15 years old, and I immediately watched the nine hours of behind the scenes that they had for oh, it, God. and was intrigued, just fascinated by the filmmaking process, and I fell in love with it instantly. And it was initially just an interest, I didn't consider pursuing it professionally, but I, I soon started to recognize how pervasive and influential mass media is. Mm -hmm. And um, I really started to recognize that, you know, you, you hear people say all the time that art reflects culture, right? And mm -hmm. I, I think there's a lot more give and take there. I think that culture a lot of times reflects art. Um, and so I felt God telling me that I was going to be a part of the reestablishment of societal norms, of shifting, of shifting morality and values yeah. back to the more traditional values and value system. And, and helping bring America and through America the rest of the world back towards him. And I just had this, this really strong calling on my heart, um, which, you know, funny enough, sounds a lot like the term culture shaping that oh, we use here, right? Our um, motto. Yeah, so <laughs> that was super reaffirming to me as well to know that this is beyond even just my own personal calling. This is a movement. You know, there are, there are so many artists that um, have had the same calling and that's just been so reaffirming and reassuring to me that I am meant to be a part of this and I'm honored to be a part of it. That's awesome. Well, that brings me to my next question, actually, which is, how did you feel when you first walked into this community, this beautiful gate, where I like to call holy misfits? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I love my church back home. It's a, they, their motto is church for the unchurched. So it's kind of similarly likes to reach out to non-Christians. But it's big, and I was feeling, um, I guess, disconnected is the best word. Mm. Um, and again, maybe that was just God preparing my heart to come out here. But as soon as I walked through the doors of Beautiful Gate, I felt like I, I was already a part of it. And I think that's, that's such a testament to what you guys are doing mm. here, that someone from all the way across the nation can come and feel that she's already been a part of this for forever, you know, and yeah. very welcomed. So, yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you. We are blessed to have you. So how has the Beautiful Gate community 
now shaped you and, and your walk with God? I mean, you've been here for a few weeks now, months maybe. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Months. yeah. and so like what, uh, like what changes have you seen as far as your walk with God and, and where you stand now with all that? Well, I've learned to be a lot more uh, missional, especially interacting with Sam. Mm -hmm. um, How can you not? Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, it's just been such a fantastic experience and also to witness everything that God's still doing. He's still a working God. The God of the Old Testament is the same God as he is today, and he's mm. still alive and working. And sometimes, sometimes today that we forget that, you know, God's not this archaic, distant being, you mm. know? Mm. And so being here and being, and being able to interact with other people with the similar callings and visions, um, it's just been so reaffirming for me in my faith. And, and yeah, I feel like I'm really growing in my relationship with God, so. That's awesome, awesome. All right, so I lost my questions now, so now I'm going to wing it. And uh, what type of chicken do you prefer, fried or? Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. Now I know you know because of what you've chosen as your calling, whatever or what God has called you to is not a a, a simple path. It's not um, anything that's easy. So can you uh, speak about some of the challenges that you've had going through this journey? My mother always says that your gifts and your curses are one and the same, and mm. I have found that to be incredibly true. Um, that's why I think she's like the wisest woman on earth. But um, so I'm very much a perfectionist, and I can be very uh, hypercritical of myself and my work. And um, I've noticed that. I mean, I, I am very thankful for that quality actually, because it, it encourages me to do the best that I can every with everything that I produce. But it also holds me back in a way um, because I don't always have the self-confidence to dream big or to pursue big things. Um, and, you know, so that's been a challenge. I'm also, like, painfully shy. What? Painfully shy. Let me you got to see your video. She does not look shy. Well, thank you. But, <laughs> um, put me on a stage and I'm okay. Yeah. You know, I'm a dancer sure. so I can perform. But, like, one-on-one -on -one interactions are so hard for me. So mm -hmm. network. In the film industry, oh, oh my gosh, the so, necessary evil. I am <laughs> man, so that's been a challenge. Um, and then also learning to listen and learning to wait mm. has been my most recent mm. challenge. So I feel like the you know in the past couple of years I felt so idle. I was like you know I'm making YouTube videos or getting a couple of views, but what am I doing to really further this? Like to further God's move movement and to do what I'm meant to do. I feel like God's given me this vision and he's prepared my heart and I'm just ready. I'm like at the starting gate and I'm ready to yeah, go, but sure. no one's opening the gate. And um, that's been really challenging for me to, you know, to have my will align with God's mm. and to accept his timing. But I also recognize that this industry, it's a hard one. Not just the industry itself, not just filmmaking itself, but the people within the industry. Um, I got to work on a feature last year as a digital loader, and so I saw firsthand um, that you know this is an industry with a lot of people that don't have my values, that don't have my morality, yeah. and that um, you know. And so I think that I think God's giving me baby steps. You know, I need to like toughen up, get a little bit of a thicker skin, and really be very confident in who I am and my own morality um, mm. before He can put me in my ultimate position that he has planned for me. So, um, so I'm learning to, learning to wait, um, but also to be courageous when he needs me to be courageous and take the risks that he asks me to take. Awesome. How has um, this Beautiful Gate movement been a safe and, and holy place for you? Um, can you share an instance of where you, you felt that was? Well, the fact that I'm sitting in LA, uh, I mean, to be honest, I knew I wanted to be a filmmaker. I knew that was what God wanted for me, but I never considered coming to LA. Wasn't even a thought. I think again, like my self-confidence, I was, you know, everyone in, in LA is a filmmaker. How am I gonna stand out here, you know? Sure. Um, so when that door opened, um, the initial reaction of my parents and my friends were like, LA is a little scary and not like North Carolina at all. Um, but then 
you know, I started reading about Beautiful Gate and about this community, and it's just such a fantastic safety net, like a just a safe place for me to come, even, you know, in the perverse nature of the industry, you know, to have all this spiritual support here mm. is fantastic. And um, I think God knew that I needed that, and um, it gives me a lot more confidence in staying here and pursuing what he wants for me. So. That's great. Awesome. All right, last question. What encouragement can you leave with all of us, and especially the artistic community here at Beautiful Gate? Well, um, God's plan is bigger than any of us. It's bigger than any of our own personal accomplishments. It's bigger than any of our own personal failures. And so I think we can take encouragement from the fact that um, he is calling a movement. He's calling this army of artists. And it's evident, you can see it in just the, the similar visions that we've all had and our calling to the industry. And so I think we can be confident, if, even if we're not confident in ourselves, if we're not confident in the opportunities that come our way, we can be confident in God's plan and we can trust in that. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, there's, there's no doubt in my mind that this is what God wants. Um, there's just been too many coincidences for this sure. to be, you know, this, and again, like it wasn't my own individual calling. It's not your own individual calling. It's not Sam's own. It's, it's bigger it's than God's. It's bigger than any of us. So, yeah. Amen. Awesome. <laughs> Give it up for Miss Hannah Redlick. Everyone, no, no, hey, hey, you know her. You ain't gonna know So, I wanted to share with you uh, a little bit about the projects that she's doing with BG. She's working with us actually on. Um, creating what they call a Patreon site. Does anyone know what Patreon is? Yep. Well, you guys are one up on me because I don't. So I'm actually gonna, because of that, I'm gonna call up Sam. Uh, he's actually gonna be the one to help launch it right now.